Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do an after-action report of Gangs of Rome 2 by Footsore Games. So let's get started. Today we're going to do using the basic or core rules of uh, Games of Rome uh, version 2. Uh, we're going to do their scenario 3, uh, which is uh, about collecting bounties. Um, this will show some of the basic rules. It'll be using the two pre-written uh, gangs uh, of four each, the red and the blue gang that are in that book. Uh, and I don't think I'm using any of the advanced rules. Uh, I am using three gangs. I don't believe that's under the advanced rules, though I do recall that the scenario didn't mention numbers of gangs like the more advanced uh, scenarios do. Uh, but I will be using three gangs. All that being said, let's go to the gaming table. basic game uses pre-designed characters, four characters, for what they call the blue and the red team. And I'm going to go ahead and use those two. Now, this is not a, a WYSIWYG game. I, I do like to, or it's my preference, to actually have the guys armed the way they should be if weapons are being mentioned. But I haven't done that in this case at all. The characters in the book, I have actually built all of those models. They are built from the War Games Atlantic plastics, but I haven't painted them. So uh, I would like to have used those because it would help those of you following along at home to remember what figure is which based on what they how they're assigned in the rule book. But instead I'm using a collection of footsore figures and Sally Forth figures and they don't have the right weapons so sorry about that. It's going to start with Rufus there on the end in the red toga. He's carrying a rock but he's not actually given any uh, equipment on the sheet. And then next to him is Cato in the orange tunic. Now he does have a piece of special equipment. It is pepper sand. It's one of the odd things about the game is the only place pepper sand is described or explained anywhere in the game is on this character. It's not listed on the equipment sheet. How to get more is not explained or how to assign it to your own characters is not explained. Uh, that was a question that was recently answered on the Facebook page so maybe there will be an answer posted there shortly. I don't know. Uh, but as of right now, there's no way to equip your own guys with pepper sand. But pepper sand, basically, if you score any hits during a regular attack, the opponent will stagger back for three and take a damage. Uh, you can only use the pepper sand once, so he, gets, he says like a handful of it. Uh, next to it is supposed to be Valens. I've changed your name to Valencia because I don't have enough painted figures. I have a bunch of figures sitting around waiting to be painted for this game. So I'm using that female who's a slinger, but I think she's actually carrying a sap. I don't think that's supposed to be a sling. It was the closest thing I had to a sling. So that's why I'm using her. Uh, the sling gives an attack 6, a range 14. That seems really long. And you have to roll a d6 when using it, and on a 1, the sling is destroyed and can't be used again. Uh, and then lastly is Barca uh, in the green tunic there. Over here, I have... Manlius in the with the arm wraps there uh, and next to him in the white toga that's Felix. Felix is supposed to have a spear. Again I have a spearman waiting to be painted but I don't have one painted yet. Actually I have at least two waiting to be painted. The spear can be used as a thrown weapon or a melee weapon. It does two points of damage. It has a range of 12 uh, if thrown at uh, attack 4. If it hits, it does two damage. If you throw it, it is destroyed, so you can only throw it once. There's no such limit for just stabbing with it. The gentleman there in the green toga holding a stick, that's Marcus. He's actually supposed to have a shield. It's a, bizarrely, none of my figures painted so far, none of my medals have a shield at all. But the shield gives him a chance to re-roll one failed defense die. Again, he rolls a d6, so on a one it is destroyed. And lastly there in the light blue, that is Nero. Scenario 3, Bounty. Local authorities have placed the price on the head of all gang fighters. 
it seems like the perfect opportunity to cash in by reducing your opponent's numbers whilst being paid. All you have to do is bring proof to the authorities. So the setup is going to be that player A will start on the far side of the table over the side with the temple on it, and player B will start on the side from where the uh, rostrum is here. For the scenario, no objective markers are placed on the table at the start of the game. Usually there will be objective markers on the game. This is a, a game about taking objectives, and this one's no different, except here an objective falls when a gang fighter is removed from the play, they will drop an objective marker, which counts as the proof. If the gang fighter carrying an objective marker proof is removed from play, the object they were carrying is destroyed, but they will drop their own objective marker instead. Uh, the player with the most proof in their possession of an end of turn five is the winner. The proof of a leader's demise counts as two when working out the final scores. Player one actually pulling this first disc, and what they get is a red. This is why it matters who has the bag, because what that means is that player one is deploying the first mob. So all except for one of the reds goes back in. So the mobs will not all activate each turn, although the players should. That's deployment done. Uh, the round sequence starts with the activation phase. That's where most of the action of the game occurs. And then it goes into the housekeeping phase, which is where you pick up things you've played and stuff like that. Reset the game for the next action. So the game is going to begin following the sort of procedure we just did, except now with activations added. So the first activation, we pull a disc. This would actually be the player one pulling this disc. And what he gets is a silver. So that means even though player one pulled, it's actually going to be player two who takes the first action. I think what I'm going to do, though, is be pretty aggressive here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a move action. So you start by marking your intentions, your intended actions. So I'm going to activate Rufus. Rufus is going to have to first move because he's too far away to blend. So what you do is you place this where the move is going to end. So it's right next to the mob. Then number two, his second action, I'm going to do a blend which means I will, if successful, move into that mob and be hiding amongst the mob. So that's all I'm gonna do, that's two actions. So Rufus is gonna roll, his agility is seven. So he's, he's pretty agile. That's what I have, seven dice. So I'm gonna roll these seven dice and I'm looking for things with these on them. So I got five successes. So I would have been fine no matter what. Um, I could have done four things, but I didn't. I was only doing two and I have five successes. I was successful. So that means that Rufus has moved up and he has successfully blended with this mob. Player two has pulled a gold, activating number one. That's only fitting. It's gonna be Manlius, uh, who's over by the left side of the temple. And I'm not sure what I want him to do. I don't want to deal with the mob if I can help it. So I'm going to go ahead and move Manliness. The Manliness's agility is seven, so he can move up to seven inches, which can, would take him all the way. Oops, that's not what I want. His first action is going to be to move a seven. His second action is going to be to move another seven, which will get him in melee range of Barca. I'm going to try to do a third action, which will be to attack Barca, but I think I'm going to leave it at that because I only have five dice and I feel like I'm kind of pushing it to do four things. I roll. All right. So I only got two successes. Manlius is going to, he's made the first one fine. He makes 
the second one fine. So he actually gets into base-to-base -base contact with Barca, but he fails the three. So what that's going to do is it'll put a stress on Manlius, which means he'll only have four dice to roll his next turn. And now the, the bag goes to Manlius' side, and Manlius pulls a disc, and he gets a silver. Just like last time, I'm going to activate Barca. A bunch of things are going to happen here. So Barca is going to have to roll his dice. He's got six. So he has to roll to see if he even gets these attacks he all he wants. So we roll his six dice, and he only gets three successes. So he's going to get at least one stress. These are melee attacks. We're going to roll our attack stat. So Barca has an attack of six. He's going to roll those six. Two fours. I got a two, two threes, two fours, and a six. Uh, so three of those are successful. We're going to now roll the defense. So he has a defense of four. So we're going to roll off those four, and I get two fives, a three, and a two. Is that for the first attack, Barca had three attacks, successful attacks, against two defenses. So one of those attacks got through, uh, and that's going to cause a wound to Manlius. Mm -hmm. Manlius only got hit, if he got hit for zero points or one point, anything less than two, he gets to fight back. That's just the, the same thing in reverse. His attack is sick. Uh, we roll, uh, we only get two successes, a four and a five. Barca's defense is three. Not great, but he gets two. That means that there's no damage done back. Uh, that's important because after all combat rolls are completed, the game fighter that inflicted the most damage is the winner of the combat. If the attacker won the combat, their activation continues as normal. Uh, if the attacker loses the combat, they move to the fail state for the attack action because had he been successful, it would have stopped the fight because remember, this is only the first activation. Uh, but that ain't going to help. I don't even need to roll a defense for that. There were no successes. So his second completely was blown. Manliness can fight back, so he's going to. And he did much better. Um, oh, a whole lot better. Uh, there's no way Bark is not getting hit this time, because he can only defend for three, and he's been hit. He's been hit five times. Um, and he stops at none of them. Uh, that's not good. He takes five hits. Can he even do that? Yes, he can. He can't take much more than that. Uh, so Barca is nearly killed uh, in one hit. This is only the second activation. He rolled successfully for three activations, but because the attack, uh, because the defender, in this case Manlius, did more damage to him on that second action than Barca did, uh, then it means that this fight was won by Manlius, and it stops his activations. So he doesn't get an extra stress for that. You only get the stress when you fail your agility roll. So he gets the stress for failing to get the fourth action in the first place. But by having lost the fight and not being able to do his third action, doesn't count against the stress. So now it goes back to the player two to pull a disc, and what we get is a goal. Nero can move for seven. He has an agility of six. Yeah, we're going to bring Nero in. So Nero's going to do sort of what I tried to do with manliness. He's going to, uh, yeah, he has to, he has to move on this side though. Oh, 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 uh, I just realized I forgot something. And then he's going to go ahead and try to hit for three and four to hit. However, what I forgot which we're going to go back and do now, is when you attack within a certain distance of a mob, 
the mob is supposed to react to that. Uh, so I forgot to roll a mob reaction. At times, a mob may be forced to react to a gang fighter's action. An action will state if and when it triggers a mob reaction. Any successful combat action will force a reaction from a mob base within six inches of the combat, be it a melee, grapple, or ranged attack. So when Barca first attacked, that would have been the first mob reaction. When a reaction is triggered, roll a d6 for each triggered mob and carry out the following. So I'm gonna roll this blue die for the mob's reaction. Uh, that's, I get a one, I think that's scared. Uh, one to two is scared. The mob becomes scared and moves six inches directly away from the triggering fight. Now, if somebody was in that six inches, they would actually get trampled. So it's sometimes useful to purposely scare mobs into your enemy. But because it moved six on that first combat, uh, it means it's going to be out of range for the next one. And then we put the one there because that keeps track for the next reaction that they weren't scared. Now we have to do the agility roll for Nero. Nero's agility is six. Remember, this was Nero's turn. We sort of got out of order because I forgot to do the mob reaction on uh, Barca's fight. That would have been his from his first success. Uh, had they not run, they would have had to do another one for the second fight for Manlius' success. But they're outside of six inches now. So we're rolling agility for Nero. Not good. He has six dice, so he had a really good chance of pulling this off. But he only had two successes. He was trying to do four things. So he's going to move his seven inches, move to his second position. Um, he's going to be there. But he doesn't get his attacks. And that, of course, means that he's taking two stresses. So now it goes to player one. Player one plays a disc. And he gets a player two. I think what I may want to do get into the fight with Kato. Kato has seven. All right, so Kato's gonna go ahead and move and try to do three attacks. So, two, six, seven. So for this to work, Kato needs four successes. He has seven dice. He's got them. He's got four successes. He's going to go ahead and move to that point. Actually, let's just go ahead and put him in. He doesn't have to move to the far one where I put those. And then put the disc there. That's just for my own notification. All right, so now he's going to attack Nero. Kato's attack is six. Uh, no successes. That is not good. Nero's going to attack back. He also has six. He has two hits, and Kato has a defense of three. Kato stops both of those. Nobody did any damage, so I guess he can continue. Uh, I think that's what that would mean. So he's going to go ahead and roll for his second attack. Six dice. He is not doing really well here. He gets two successes, three defense by Nero, three, uh, he stops one, uh, one hit to Nero. All right, so now in reverse, this time six dice from Nero back. Uh, he gets four hits, only three can be defended, only one is. So that's three hits to um, Kato, and that is better than what Kato did, so it ends the turn. It goes back to player two. Player two actually gets to activate one of his own. All right, Valencia could shoot. Do I want to do that? This is a tricky move, because if I miss, I will hit one of my own, and I don't think I have any other target. I do have him. Her range with that thing is 14 inches, which is crazy to me. I'm gonna go ahead and activate 
and we're just going to shoot three times at Felix over there. Three times at Felix. So she only has five, and she can only do two. So she's going to get a stress. Seven attack. That is good. Oh, wait. I don't think that's how this works. There's an attack number listed for the ranged weapons. I believe these these use the ranged weapons attack, not hers. It's still six. When making a ranged attack, follow the rules for melee attack. The only exception is when is showing the specified range of the weapon before rolling attack. Range is measured. Should any part of the target be obscured by trained mobs or other gang fighters, they're classified as in cover. I'm assuming that this is shooting over a gang. Uh, I mean a mob. But she's hitting... Felix with six. She hits for three. Felix defends. Is that four? Yep, he's got a good defense. Is he the one with the shield? No, he has a spear. Okay, but he doesn't get any successes, so that is three hits. That's a good hit. So we go to her second attack. She just sends another rock over there. That's a cock die, which is weird. Uh, that's three. He defends with four. He stops all of them. If all hits from a ranged attacker successfully defended, the attacker's activation will end. Unlike a melee attack. So that does take away the third uh, fight that she... Oh, oh actually, she... Should have had that one, should she have? Yeah, because she didn't do anything. So she was taking three attacks. Um, yep, so that does cause her to end. Melee it wouldn't have, but... I don't know. For mob reaction, I'm not sure if it is the shooter or the shooty that affects the mob. Any successful combat action will force a reaction from any mob base within six inches of the combat. I'm going to call that counting because I feel like it's got to be either the shooter or where it lands uh, since the combat was over both and that's kind of how it was worded. We're going to roll the die. There's a negative one. We get two. That's one. They're still scared. We're going to move away. Now this is where this gets hard because uh, I'm not clear what away from combat means. Do they run to the shooter? I'm going to say they move here, away from both of them. I can move a gold. Felix has a move of six. He's going to move to there, and then attack. Felix has five. I can only attack once. He can only attack once because the spear only gives him one attack if he's throwing it, which is what he's about to do. Not sure that was the right choice, but one of the few melee weapons on, or ranged weapons on the board, so it might have been a mistake. So he gets two successes, so that means he's going to be able to do both these things. So he's going to go to here, and then he's going to get to roll his throw. He only gets two hits, though. That's not great. Valencia defends with three, the usual three. She stops none. So she takes two hits. Uh, that's enough to stop her from shooting back, too, because it's two hits. 2-2 two, two gets to activate a mob. I'm going to try to do a reaction on this mob. And I'm going to try to move it. I, get a, I have to move D6. I only move an inch. We're going to move it towards uh, Felix. Now it's player one pulls a disc. That's another mob. I, don't, I can't move that group because they just did. But I could attempt to move another one. We're going to go ahead and attempt to move the one that's over here. So we roll a d6, we get 6. And we're going to move it towards the main fight. I think there's just one left. 
There is, and it's going to be turn, the, the number one guy. This is Marcus. Marcus moves for five. He's a little slower. He's got seven agility. So we're going to go ahead and try to move him to there, to there, to here, and then we'll try to fight. Why not? He activates on a seven. That's why I decided to go ahead and try four. Not oh, good. He only got two successes. So he's only going to move to here. And he gets two stresses because he didn't, that wasn't the thing to do. So this is housekeeping phase. Once all activation has been completed, with there are no more tokens remaining, housekeeping phase begins. Carry out the following steps. Check whether the victory conditions in the scenario have been played. They have not. In this, we need to hold victory objectives till the end of the, the five turns. Gather all tokens to the fight, game fighters still in the game and all relevant mob tokens and place them back in the bag or counter and create a new draw. Do not include any tokens for game fighters removed from play. And then we go into the next turn. That's going now. So we're going to go ahead and go to turn two. Player two pulls first and he gets a mob. I'm going to try to move this mob away. I don't like them there. I didn't get them. I only got two inches. Player one. Player one pulled silver, so that's player two that's actually going to do the move. I'm going to go ahead and activate Kato. And Kato doesn't have any stress. He's got seven agility attacks with six. This is dangerous because Kato could die on return shots, but Kato is going to attack. Try to attack for four? Yeah. He's going to try to attack for four. I'm attacking Nero. Nero's not as badly beat up. All right, so first we have to roll our agility. So his agility is seven. This is risky because I think it looks like I did not do well this fight last time. So we're rolling seven dice and we get only two successes. That's not good because we had four things listed there. So that's two stress for next turn. We're going to attack with six. For the first attack, that is good. That is six hits. There's no way that, um, that Nero can defend all of those. Nero defends on three. He stops two of them, but that's still four hits. Uh, that's going to bring him to six. Wow. Uh, he doesn't get to fight back because he took six points of damage. That is rough. And uh, I still got my second because I only blew uh, the, the other two. So we're swinging again. All right. This could kill him. This will kill him because he just did four hits. He can only stop at maximum of three. He only stopped two. So that's enough. The way this scenario is played, when a person is killed, they drop a objective marker representing some proof of who they are. Nero is gone. Nero is out of the game. Goes to players two turn. Player two gets a player two. I think the thing we're gonna do is activate Barca, who is right here. What's, what are we looking at with Barca? Barca's in bad shape. Oh, Barca needs to bind. He's got stress, so he's only got five dice. I don't feel like you can bind if you're in a fight. Let's check that real quick. Bind will get him some of his points back, and he could use that. It just doesn't make any sense to me that in the middle of, a, of an action, though, that you're going to be binding. Bind. Roll a d6 if the result uh, doesn't say you can't. Doesn't seem to make sense to me. He's going to make between one and three points back if he successfully binds. I could try to bind more than once, but I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think we want to go too far. We're going to be rolling five dice. I've not been rolling great. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and try to bind and attack twice. 
So he only gets five dice because of the stress. So the stress will come off now. Uh, he gets two, so that stress is going to go back on for the third because he failed that. The bind, he, we roll a dice to see the effect. I rolled a three, two through five, heal two. So that's going to bring Barka to three. That was probably, that may have saved his life. Uh, that's his first action. His second action is going to be a combat. Uh, for this he gets six. Uh, he hits for three. This is hitting Manlius, however, who is the guy that defends on four, so he can actually stop all of those. He doesn't. He stops two of them, though. So Manlius does take one damage. That ain't good for Barca, though, because that means he can attack back. Uh, he attacks with six. Only, only gets two. That might help Barca. Barca defends on three. He could stop those. He does. Barca lived. I wasn't so sure about that. I think I'm going to go ahead and activate Valencia. Valencia is going to have only four activation because... Uh, stress that was on her. She's going to shoot at Marcus, who's running across the green there. She's only going to shoot twice because of her reduced agility. She got three. She could have done one more. Oh well. Her shoot is seven. Alright, she's got two hits. He's going to defend, I think, on three. No, he defends on four as well. That's three. And he has a shield. Uh, so he got threes, so that stopped those. That stops her turn, because that's how that works. I have to roll to see if her uh, weapon survives. It does. Goes to turn two. And I get a gold one. That's fitting. I think what we're going to do is activate Manlius. Manlius has one stress, so he only activates before he moves at six. Oh, he'll have to move two to get in. try to do three. But he's going to only activate on four, so this was rough. Oh, but he got three! He did it! He did it! He gets in, gets there, and gets one attack. Uh, so he attacks with six. Oh, a pretty good hit, too. It's four hits. Uh, that is against uh, Kato. Kato only starts, stops three. Uh, he only stops one. So he's going to take three hits. Uh, he can't shoot back because that was too much damage to him. So he is done. Our player one chooses. He gets a silver. I think the only one I have left is over there. Uh, he's going to have to start by coming out of the fight, but he can come out anywhere. So I think the thing to do is to come out here. He's going to come out there. He's going to... He moves for five. So he's going to close with manliness. He's got seven, so we're going to go ahead and try to attack for two. So we're rolling activations for... Rufus, who's right now in this group. Uh, that's not good. I only got two. But the two will take him out of there, and it'll bring him up to manliness. But unfortunately, it doesn't let him attack manliness. And it's going to give him two stress. So that was a little, a little rough. I had an attack over here. In fact, I had a kill, so I should have had to roll over here. It was still a one-on-one -on -one fight. Uh, so it should have been for them. One would have terrified them. 
so they would have left. That matters actually, because that means I would have had to come out for one and then close for two. I would actually be here. Wouldn't have been able to get there because the crowd got too far away. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's us. And it's gold. Manliness can get revenge. I think manliness is all that's left. So manliness is going to attack. Uh, he's attacking Barca there. We're going to try to do three hits. All right, can we do that? Ah, I could. I only get four dice to roll for manliness because of stress. But I got three. That's all I needed. That's what I put, right? Yeah. So, manliness. Tax with six. Hits Barca. Hits Barca three times. Barca defends with a three. Stops two, but he takes one. That means Barca can fight back. Barca fights with a six. Uh, gets three hits. Uh, I think manliness defends with four. He does. But he gets no successes, so manliness takes three hits. That was not good. That was a bad attack. That's going to end that turn. Our player one. Player one gets a gold. That is Felix. Felix can close, and he can pick that up. And that's what Felix is going to do. Or he's going to try to do that, at least. So Felix activates with uh, three. Try to do two. He got two. So Felix gets in there and picks up an objective. Weirdly, it's his own objective, but. All right, red. Um, that's going to be a gang. Going to go ahead and try to move that group. That would be the end of the turn. So turn three. And we begin with a mob. Player two gets to move the mob. We're gonna to try to move that one. We move it three inches. To there. All right, player one gets a player one. We're gonna go ahead and put it on Manliness. Manliness is down to four. He, he's almost dead. Uh, he's going to need a bind. We're going to do a bind and a two uh, attack on uh, Parka. So he's down four dice. He's only trying two things, but he only got one. So he's got the stress remains. We roll for his bind. He gets two points back, and that is his turn done. Our player two, I get a silver, that's what we want. I think we're gonna activate Rufus. Rufus is down, he's down to five, that's still pretty good. Rufus is gonna close with manliness, manliest. And then he's gonna try to hit for twice. So he's only got five. But he got three. That's what he needed. So he loses his stress. He closes. And then he's going to start attacking. He's got six. Only two, three hits. And then his defense on four. He can stop all those. He doesn't though. He only stops one. So he takes two hits. So he's back where he just was. He gets to swing back. He swings for six. He hits for four. Rufus probably only has three. Rufus is at least getting hit. But he's never been hit. Rufus is getting hit for three. Because he had only stopped one. All right, he can live with that. Okay, that was the fight back. It means Rufus 
lost, so it does end the rest of those fights. Turn one pulls the silver, we're going to put it on Barca. Barca's down to five, so Barca's going to try to bind and then hit Manlius for three. Oh, he gets one hit. That is not good because, of course, Manlius saves on fours uh, and he stops it, no problem. But then Manlius hits back. Manlius only hits for two. Barker defends with three. That's doable. There it is. Uh, but he takes one. I forgot to roll for the bind. First thing was a bind. Player two! Player two pulls a silver. We're gonna have to try to. Oh, I need to roll. And they're in a negative one. One, so they're scared. So they just ran six, six inches off again. Kato is going to attack Marcus. Kato is, ooh, Kato is down. Oh, well, he's, yeah, he's only down to five. Yeah, we're gonna try to roll all three on Rufus there. So five dice, we want three successes. Well, we got two successes, so one stress. I mean, one, two successes. So the first one will be the bind. Uh, he got a four, so he binds a, two wounds. He doesn't get the third action, but the second action. He's going to attack Rufus. His attacks with six. He gets four hits. Not Rufus, Marcus. Marcus again defends with four. These guys are good. Marcus also has a shield. So Marcus stops three of those. The shield misses, but he can use it again. Uh, it still misses. Uh, now we roll. There's a possibility that the shield will be destroyed on a one. It is not. Uh, but he, So he takes one damage. But that does mean that he gets to hit back. He hits with six. That's four hits. Kato stops three, or can defend against three. He stops two. That's only half of them. So the points he just healed, he just lost again. Player one pulls, gets a mob. We're gonna move this mob closer, back four inches. Player two pulls, gets a silver. Try to activate Valencia with her amazing sling. Try to shoot three times. All of them at Felix. We have five. Not good. It's one hit. Uh, so that's going to be two stresses next time. She rolls sevens to hit, though. Three hits, he can defend some of those. He can defend up to four. Uh, he stops three of them, that's all. Not good. So player one pulls a gold. That is Felix, I think. Felix gonna hit Kato. Felix has no stress, he can hit five. He's gonna try to hit Kato three times. And he does. So Kato attacks, or Felix attacks on a seven. That's five hits. Kato can only defend three. He can stop two of them. That's still three hits though. And that's more than Kato can take. So Kato is gone, and he leaves a marker where he was.
Player two picks. There's another gold. This is going to be Marcus. Marcus is injured, but he's not. Ooh, he's almost dead. And he's carrying a point. I think the thing to do with Marcus is to get him out of here. He moves six inches. They should have rolled. Two, so that would have been, again, scared back to there. Try to run up to the uh, temple. Got agility seven. It's turn four. Penultimate turn of the game. First move, turn two gets to activate a group. We're going to try to move. We're going to try to move this one. And it's going to move six inches right to here. Player one, other gang. We're going to try to move this one. And move three inches to there. Player two, gold. I'm going to play this on Felix. Felix is going to pick up. And then he's going to blend. Uh, Felix activates on five. That's all he needs. Felix is blended. Oh, and he picked up. So they're winning so far. Okay, gold gets to move. I'm going to go ahead and attack Barca. Uh, we're going to attack Barco with three. That means I roll four. I got three, so that's those are hits. Attack for six. Six. Two hits. Not good. Barco can stop that. Uh, he didn't. He stopped. Takes one. But he can hit back with that, so. He hits for three. Matlinus can defend with four, though. Only stop one. That's two hits on Matlinus. That's more than Matlinus can take. Should have healed him. Matlinus is dead. Matlinus was not carrying a point. That was a mistake on my part. I should have done a bind. Uh, got to pay attention to that. I uh, got a silver for turn two. Gonna go ahead and do I activate. I'm gonna activate Barca. Uh, Barca is going to pick up, and he's going to heal. And what the heck? He's gonna try to get out of dodge. So that's, well, he's got two. So he's gonna get a stress. He does take the piece. He does bind. Uh, that was, so that's two. He doesn't get to leave. Player one pulls. It's a gold. Who has not activated? He's gonna go ahead and move into the temple. Okay, turn two. I get an activation of two. I'm going to try to activate Rufus. Rufus is going to move for five. And merge. Rufus activates seven. Uh, <laughs> he can't. 
I was going to try to move bl blend and then pop out wherever Felix pops out. But now he will have lost his opportunity to do that because it will be the last turn of the game. Turn one, silver. That's just my lady up on top. She's got no targets. I'm just going to try to move her. Valencia, three. She's just trying for one. She did. She moves for a seven, so she's going to move all over here. Last turn of the game. Player two begins pulling a disc. I got a silver. Because I can't use those trips, when he activates, he's going to come out over here. There's no way I can get to them from there. I could try to shoot with her. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try to activate Rufus because you have to activate somebody. So I'm going to try to activate Rufus. All I'm doing is try, I just need one because I'm just going to go into the, I'm one die down. They just need to go into the blend. I got two, so he blends. Player one chooses. We move a mob. I try to move the mobbies in. Six. Four. I'm going to move the four inches that way. Turn two pulls. Gets a silver. Try to activate Barka. Barka's going to try to activate to get off. He's going to try to activate for one. Barka activates on fives. Because he's down because of stress. Barka has one. I forgot that. Two successes, so that's fine. I could actually win this. It's not likely, but I can. Turn one, pulls a gold. This is game. I'm going to go ahead and try to activate. He's going to pop out. That's, a, that's his first action, but it is a freebie. Uh, then he's going to... He looks moves for seven. We only need two because that, that first one's free. He's only got five. He got no successes. That's not good for, for him. On the other hand, I can't shoot him because he's blocked. Forgot about that. He's perfectly safe. Oh, but I can shoot the crowd. I can shoot the audience. Uh, turn two. That's what we do. We're going to activate Valencia. Valencia is going to have to activate to go back to where she started. She's going to try... She might as well try for all, right? Because the most she can do is fail. She's only got five hits, but stress at this point ain't going to hurt her. Oh, nah. She only got one success. She's going to get here, but she's not going to get her shot off. That is game. Because uh, that's all they could have done. I think that was the last move anyway. The team one got two objectives and only one objective from uh, the other side. Neither of them were the leaders. So they're all equal. So it's two points to one point with turn one leading. So that was the bounty scenario, the beginning version of the bounty scenario. In the rules, there are multiple versions of each of the scenarios, changing some of the rules for whether it's the basic game or the advanced game or the campaign game. But this is the core version of the bounty uh, game. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments you'd like to make, please put those in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any ideas for further content you'd like to see us produce here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, we look in the content section for that as well. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, I hope you'll hit like, and if you'd like to receive further videos like this one that may help you determine how to better spend your money or time in your tabletop wargaming hobby, then I hope you'll hit subscribe and ring our notification bell. Till next time, cheers.